Hello and welcome to the Bearded Math Men's YouTube channel. Hope you guys are all doing well. What we're going to talk about today, polynomial functions and the multiplicity of roots. So specifically, what we're going to see is that the number of solutions to a polynomial equation set equal to zero, the number of solutions is going to be the same as the degree of that polynomial. So you have a polynomial that's got a degree of five, there are going to be five solutions. Those five solutions can be a combination of, they can all be real, they can all be unique, they can be imaginary, or they can be repeated. So we're going to learn about that. That's all, that's what multiplicity is dealing with. So that's the big idea. Here, here we go. Let's, let's see an example. So if you have a polynomial function of degree n, you're going to have n solutions. Those solutions are some call, sometimes called roots, sometimes called zeros, sometimes they're x-intercepts. So this is a quadratic equation, right? 3x squared minus x plus 11, the degree is 2. That means it's going to have two solutions no matter what. Now, what we know about graphing these is quadratic equations can have 0, 1, or 2 x-intercepts. So if there's two x-intercepts, that means there are two real solutions. If there's one x-intercept, that means there's one real and one imaginary solution. And if there are zero x-intercepts, that means there are two imaginary solutions, right? So let's talk about x-intercepts. When you're finding an x-intercept, you take the function, you set it equal to zero, and you solve it. We're solving for x. And we're dealing with real numbers when we're solving for x. The problem is this equation right here, it can have real solutions, but it can also have imaginary solutions. And up until this point, up until this point, we really haven't dealt with the imaginary portions, right? So let's see how this one works right here. So you set the equation equal to zero, right? It's quadratic, it's not factorable. So we're going to use the quadratic formula. Now if you remember the thing called the discriminant, the discriminant's the radical, the radicand of the square root, b squared minus 4ac, if that's less than zero, then the solutions are imaginary. If it's less than zero, that means it's negative, and square root of a negative number is imaginary. So here, the discriminant is negative 131. That's definitely negative. That means we're going to have two imaginary solutions to this equation. So we have no x-intercepts, but we have two imaginary solutions. So it's going to be 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 131 over 6. Now if we write this, in case you forgot, this right here is all mixed up. This is a complex number. It's got a real part and an imaginary part. The way we write that is like this. It's going to be the real part first, one-sixth, and then plus the imaginary part. Do you see? And then we have, of course, a minus. So this quadratic equation has two solutions, and they're both imaginary. Let's talk about repeated solutions, right? So here we have a polynomial function of degree 5, right? And this actually only has one x-intercept, okay? So the function with the degree of 5 is going to have five solutions, right? But it only has one x-intercept. So this is going to be, this is going to help us understand how we can have repeated solutions. That's multiplicity. So this is going to have a solution of x equals 6 with a multiplicity of 5. That means you're going to have five of those identical solutions. And so on a graph, it looks just like this. So let's get into that. Let's see how that works, right? So just like before, we're going to find the solution. So we're going to set it equal to zero. We're going to factor it completely, right? We could take the fifth root, but let's go ahead and do this. Let's, let's factor it completely, right? So we have five of these. X to the fifth means the base times itself one, two, three, four, five times, right? And now we take, and we take each of those factors and set them equal to zero, and we solve it. And as you can see, we have five solutions of X equals six. So the, the solution, to this, the, the x-intercept is 6, but the solutions have a multiplicity of 5. We have 5 times, we have 5 of x equals 6. So multiplicity of 5 means that that answer is repeated 5 times. Do you see? So when you're dealing with these polynomial functions, if the degree is 5, you're going to have 5 solutions. They might not be unique, like in this case. And that's where we talk about the multiplicity. If we have a unique, like to say x equals 3, and it's the only time x equals 3, then that has a multiplicity of 1. Let's see another example. Let's see one that's a little tricky, right? That's going to combine a lot of the skills you're learning with polynomials. So here, here's the, here's the example, right? x to the seventh minus 64x. And we're supposed to find all of the roots of this polynomial function, and then we're going to name the multiplicity of each root. Yeah? First thing we got to identify is the degree is 7. So that means there are going to be 7 solutions. They could be repeated. 
They could be imaginary, they could be real, it could be any combination thereof, okay? So, just like before, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set it equal to zero and we're gonna factor it. Now there's a lot of factoring to go on on this one right here. We can take an X out first, you see? And then what we have right here, when we take the X out, we have is the difference of, of cubes. So if you factor X to the six minus 64, we get X squared minus four, and then X to the fourth plus four X squared plus 16. If you're having trouble with factoring the sum or difference of cubes, I'll leave a link in the description. You can go um, refresh your memory on how those things work. But a cube minus another cube, you can use this formula right here to factor it, right? So here we've got it factored all the way completely. This was a difference of squares, x plus 2x minus 2. Yeah. Now we're going to take each of those, set them equal to 0, and solve them. So here are the equations we have. This one's already solved, right? x equals 0, x equals 2, x equals negative 2. This one right here, it's not factorable, so we're going to have to use a quadratic formula. Let's go ahead and do that on this next, this next screen right here. So we're going to have to use u substitution, right? So we're going to say u is equal to x squared. And because u is equal to x squared, that means u squared is x to the fourth. So we can do the substitution like that. We can use a quadratic formula to solve for this u, right? And here's what we get, right? negative two plus or minus two times the square root of three i. So there's a whole lot of reducing and simplifying of square roots, right? So the square root of 48, 48 is 16 times three, the square root of 16 is four. And the i, if you look carefully, it's not inside the square root, it's after, which is what it's supposed to be. A lot of the time, if you're dealing with square roots and imaginary units, then you put uh, parentheses around the i. That way it is very clear that the imaginary portion is not inside the square root. Because you can have square roots of imaginary numbers, and we're going to have those here when we go ahead and substitute u for x squared to solve for x. Right? So now we got x squared equals these things, and we take the square root of each. Now this is this is ugly. It's complicated. We could simplify it if we wanted to, but it's a little beyond what we really need to do for right now. So all we're really doing is we're going to be saying what the roots are and their multiplicity. So we're not gonna simplify this because that would take us a whole bunch of time and it's kind of tangential to what we're learning. Maybe we'll do that in a separate video. But here's what we got. We do have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven solutions. We found them all here. We have four that are imaginary, they're unique, they're all really similar, but they're unique. And all of the real solutions are also unique. If we were to graph this function, this is what it looks like. So it's true, there are seven solutions, but there are only three x-intercepts. That's because three of the solutions, three of the roots are real. Four of them are imaginary. So imaginary numbers don't show up on this uh, Cartesian coordinate plane. Imaginary numbers are on the complex number plane. Yeah, so let's put it all together, right? Big idea, if you have a polynomial of degree n, there are going to be n solutions, right? So if you have a polynomial degree of 9, there will be 9 solutions. And those solutions, they can all be unique. You can have 9 unique solutions, or you can have a combination where it could be 8 of them are repeated and 1 is unique. It could be a combination of real and imaginary. But no matter what, you're going to have exactly as many roots as the value of the degree, right? Now, multiplicity, all that you're doing with multiplicity is you're describing how many times a non-unique root is repeated. So, you know, if you had x minus 2 to the power of 11, you only have, you have 11 solutions, but they're all repeated. It's 2 11 times, right? Now, the way you find the solutions, just like before, you're going to set the equation equal to 0. You're going to factor it as much as you can. You're going to use whatever tools are at your disposal to solve for x to find them. And that's it. Hey, if this is helpful and you would like some practice, you can check out my website, thebeardedmathman.com. You can find practice problems, uh, all kinds of other math on there from for high school, all free for you to use if you're a teacher, if you're a student, parent, whatever. It's all right there. I'll leave a description. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can access that. And um, here are some practice problems you can give a shot. I hope you guys are doing well. Let me know if this is confusing. Give it a thumbs up if it's been helpful. Share it on social media. Hope you guys have a great day.